All right, welcome to my session. In this session, uh, I will be talking mostly on the examples for if statements and else if structure. So, if you've watched the lecture, probably you know what if statement is, but I'm going to give a brief description of that before we get started. So, um, here's how it works. Bef instead of um, giving a boring description, I think this is a much better way to explain certain stuff. So, let's say uh, there's a number uh, we don't know what the number is, so the user is going to enter that number. But we want to show the user whether or not, well, if, if his number is positive, we want to show you that, we want to show him that the number is positive. And if the number is negative, we want to show him that the number is negative. Thus, we need to define an if condition. So if condition works like this. Okay, um, so I'm going to write the code on the command window. Let's say we have a number. The, num the, num the name of the variable is number. And we can get an input from the user. Input enter a number, colon, space, single quote. And it asks for a number, let's say 45. All right. So we can do it in two different ways. First way is just uh, type the condition or type the whole structure in the command window. So let's do that. If number is greater than zero and you see there is like no um, curly brace or anything like in C. If number is greater than zero, if I press enter, um, display positive. Great. Well, what is the other condition? Else if number is zero and notice we are using two equals sign, display zero and what is the else well we know anything other than numbers greater than zero or numbers equal to zero are negative so display negative and that you're going to write down and but you need to know this is like a general thing in MATLAB so whenever you're finishing um, whether an if statement, a switch statement, for loop, while loop, even a function, you have to put an end when, you, when you're when you done writing the structure. So let's say end, and you see it's positive, but you know there's a problem here. What if I want to use this over and over again? I cannot just copy and paste the whole thing over and over again, right? It, it's just stupid. So instead, we're going to call something called a script. So you go to the current folder, and right click and you go to new file and you see script. So it created a script, it's untitled, and don't touch that M. It's our, uh, let's say positive, it's our file type. So you double click on it and you see there's an editor here. So I'm going to copy and paste the whole thing here, right? Except the positive. And you save it, command save, CLC so that we could have a better window. All right, so let's say, you know, you see our number is 45, so let's just call this thing. To call it, you just type the name, positive. You see it's positive. Let's say the number is something different, negative 12, right? Well, let's call our positive script. It's negative. Okay, there was a tricky part here. Number, what if, what if number is zero, right? Well, let's call it. Zero works just like we hoped. All right, I'm gonna clear the whole thing and we're going to try a different example. And from now on, I'm going to be using this um, script window because it's much easier and much more modular and we want modular programs when you're programming. All right, there's another example and this time we're going to use more if, uh, more else if conditions other than this one. So, okay, here's the condition. Um, there's, a, there's a person and we don't know his age, but we can make a guess from his age that um, he might have a driver's license or not. So, for example, if his age is less than 16, well, he, he doesn't have a driver's license. If he says that he does, he's lying. If he's over 70, that means he requires a special license for older or senior citizens. Um, if he is less than 70, um, he probably have a standard license. He may not either. And if he's less than 18, 
then he probably has a youth license. So let's enter all of this information. So let's say this is our condition here. If age, this will be our variable, is less than 16, display, um, sorry, cannot have a license. All right, else if, if age is less than 18, display may have youth license. Else if age is less than 70, sorry about that, display may have a standard license. All right, and the last condition is, is going to be else. And actually, you know what? I'm going to define this. Else if uh, age, and let's assume that people can only live as much as 100 years. So let's play. You may have a special license. And the last one is else condition. Now I'm going to use this for error checking. So it's going to be beep. And let's end it. Okay, I've saved it. Let's say ages, let's say five, two. And enter a condition that was positive, still positive. You know what, actually you can change the name. Wait a second here. Um, where is rename? I guess you just press enter. All right, age. Okay, so actually it's going to be a problem. So a checker, I'm going to write a checker because you know, we have the same variable with the same name. A checker, let's call it a checker. Sorry, cannot have a license, just like we expected. Age is equal to, let's say 55. Well, a checker may have a standard license. Let's try out this weird case where the age could be 120 or a crazy number, right? Okay. Call a checker. Beep. See, when you make a mistake, you can use this beep. So it warns the computer or it makes a beep sound. So that means, well, there's a problem here. You need to change the code or change the variable that you enter because it's wrong. We can, or we'll also see that we can use some conditions or while loops so that when the user makes a mistake, it goes back and warns the user.